we are ending in Mexico yeah. and mountain time zone. 80 degrees. <sighs> we're queued up outside of Carlsbad. Um, we're going to show you how we're going to get mail there tomorrow. And this is the closest public lands that we found nearby. So we just hold up close to Carlsbad and this is the closest B. Closest uh, BLM public land. Oh, there's a bee. He got in. Oh, well, he'll get out. Oh, there he goes. Oh, ah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're just going to hold up here to closest public free land to park at just out of town. Probably, what, five miles? Yeah. Yeah. So, it's not the greatest spot. It's like an old reservoir. Dried up. Dried up reservoir, but at least we can put the lawn chairs out. Sit in the warm sun, have a cold beer, relax. I bet that sunset's gonna be Try nice. out the new hat in the sun. It's working Keep for you, bald head. <laughs> it works. There's lots of bees. Okay, I'm gonna pull the screenshot. Bye. Hello. So this morning we are at the Carlsbad, New Mexico post office. I'm gonna go in and pick up a, a package and if it went well, it'll be in there. When I come back, I'll let you know how we did all this. <laughs> We have a package, success. Okay, this is the first time we've done this. We have a mailbox in Nevada that is a mail service box. So basically we have mail shipped to that address, like bills or different things, and then they will send it to us anywhere we want. Um, typically, well, typically we've just had them forward it to her mom's house, then she goes through it and sorts through it and then a bunch of it was kind of piling up, so... Yeah, end of the year stuff. Um, and then also, Pistol got some fan mail. Pistol got a package from Melissa and Lola in Nevada. And uh, Lola's the cutest Lhasa Opso you'll ever see. Uh, they're, they're Pistol super fans, so they sent Pistol some stuff too. So that all got shipped to my mom's in Oregon, and then she sent it on to us and this is how she did it um, you can send it to any post office my name general delivery so we don't actually have to have an address anywhere you just uh, make arrangements to pick it up at whatever post office which was kind of tricky for us because we never know where we're gonna be so we had to kind of plan ahead and right. have mom ship it and they'll hold it for 30 days so yeah I gave us I gave us some time to not worry about having to rush there it's, it's actually been here for three or four days so yeah and you all they do is check your ID make sure it's you and then off you go with your mail so it's a really handy way again this is the first time we've used it but we'll likely do it in the future as well Pistol's getting impatient. She is getting impatient. She wants to open up her package. We've been waiting on this package a couple months because originally I I'd, I'd had planned to fly home to Oregon, so the package was waiting for me there. Then that didn't happen because of the weather, so boy, this has been a long time coming. We're gonna break this open. Pistol, what do we got, girl? This is from Lola and Melissa. What is this? Yeah. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a hit. Pistol! Uh -oh. oh, it's got a squeaker. Give me, give me, give me. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. Okay, Pistol loves stuffies. We rarely get them for her because she demolishes them. But these, this is really a success. <laughs> oh my gosh. Warm and snugly. That is the cutest blanket I've ever seen. Life is truly good. Thank you, Melissa and Lola. This is amazing. You are the luckiest girl. We're headed 
to a state park, Brantley Lake State Park. I'm assuming there's a lake out here, but it looks pretty barren Don't so far. Well, we got the last walk-in site. Um, there are some sites here that you can make reservations for, but we got the last one that did not require a reservation. So we're right over there. It's a little bit windy. I'm actually trying um, a windscreen of sorts on this camera. Once we get back to camp, I will show you what I've done. Um, I know some of you have mentioned that the wind is annoying. I know it's annoying and I haven't been able to find anything that works, so I'm trying something handmade now, so. <laughs> Irene's got something figured out. So. Yeah, well, we'll see if it's gonna work. I wanna run some tests here and check check the footage back and see if it's windy at all or if it helped. We're walking down to the primitive sites to see what those are like. Since it's kind of chilly at night, because we're up at elevation, I guess, uh, we thought we'd pay the $14 for the plug-in site. Yes. It's a pretty good deal, $14 for a plug-in site. Well, we haven't done this, but I think, I don't know, next year, the year after, sometime we're going to want to come spend more time down here. The state of New Mexico has an annual parks pass. I think for non-residents like us, it's like $225 a year. Yeah. So then for that year, if you have that pass, like this campground is $4 a night, that pass. For a full hookup. Yeah. That's... So if you're, yeah, if you're going to spend any significant amount of time in the parks down here, it definitely would pay to get the pass. Love to come spend some more time down here and explore it. Yeah. This is the primitive area. I mean, there's a fire ring here. Right on the water. Not much else going on down here. I mean, they, they mean primitive. Brantley Lake. Actually pretty decent size. We see some people out there fishing. Okay, so we're back to camp. Um, gonna run a few experiments on the camera for the windscreen idea. Let me show you what I've got on there. So this is the camera I film everything with. Yeah. Uh, we have two of them, so I'm running a test here. I have, if you see this windscreen I've got, this is actually a pistol leg warmer we bought when we were up near Niagara Falls. Um, it was cold and her legs got cold, so she now has leg warmers. So I put one of those on this camera. The mic on this camera, as you can see on this one, is up here. It's an internal mic. And then also there's another one back here. So, so it is a little breezy out and um, I'm running some comparisons. So I'm gonna go back and look at this footage and listen and see which camera has better sound quality or if I notice a difference between the two. Cause I'm hoping this little simple fix will work. What you doing, honey? Brownies. <laughs> making a mess. Yeah, I'm making it my own. This is what I'm using for chocolate chips. Dark chocolate with sea salt and almonds. And then I'm also adding slivered almonds. This is brownies with almonds. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. Okay, brownies are in. They are a little dark. Um. So here's the deal. What we've been learning is the last couple times I've cooked with this, it's been really windy. And I don't know if you saw what I had. I mean, I put wood around it and I try to do everything I can to protect it from the wind, but the wind's kind of swirling. And so that you have to have the flame up higher on the stove to keep the, the oven temperature up. So the last time we cooked with it, I can't remember where we were, but we cooked Oh, biscuits. We made biscuits. They got a little dark they on got, the bottom. You could, we actually took them out a little bit early because you could actually start to smell, you know, that kind of the burning smell. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, it's time to pull them. So we did, and they were. They were pretty dark. Same thing with the brownies. About 
five, ten minutes before I was supposed to pull them. Mm -hmm. I could smell that, so I turned the oven off, and it kind of dawned on me that, well, duh, it's an oven, but it doesn't just have a radiating element around it. Mm -hmm. You have flame that's protected, but still, I had, had to, I had to have the flame up extra high to keep the main thing, because the wind is just constantly cooling it. So I just turned it off and let it just kind of stay in there a little bit longer. So maybe get some edges that are dark, but we'll see what comes up with the rest Let's of it. Let's crack these open. I'm not waiting. Falling apart. Uh-oh. What's the bottom look like? Not a little bit dark. A little dark, but I don't think it's going to be bad. Let's try it. Oh my god, brownies. Oh my gosh. I'm not a dessert guy, sweet guys, but... That's brownies with almonds. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. Then cool off, so I can come out better. They'll be gone. We're a bit impatient. We are. I joked earlier and said we're going to have to put some in the freezer because there's so many. Probably not happening. They're not too dark at all. Yeah. These are pretty amazing. Turns out they go really well with wine. Mmm, they would. I've never tried brownies with almonds. I've only really? done them with walnuts. Isn't that more common? Yeah, I think so. So, thank you, Alex. You're the first person who suggested something to bake inside our oven. And even though they got a little darker in parts just it was a huge one, success just this one side yeah but if we do them if you're gonna cook with that oven yeah and i even have the shelf as high as it'll go in the oven mm -hmm. just to keep it away from that flame but you know what i think we need if there's such a thing or maybe we can make something um <clears throat> a cover for it that you can use while you're baking yeah like a fireproof thing mm -hmm. that goes and protects from the wind that would be amazing but it's still it's the wind getting we, to the flame we're actually looking at a different um cook stove so stay, stay tuned for that yeah because it just a lot of wind gets in there and mm -hmm. anyway <clears throat> all right stop brownie time good morning we are packing up camp and heading out i think this morning we're gonna take a highway that goes way up into the mountains it's kind of a windy twisty road we've taken it before it goes up into cloudcroft new mexico which dave fell in love with last year really cold up there though so i don't think we're spending the night but no it is beautiful high mountains yeah i think it's over ten thousand feet in cloudcroft but it's beautiful it's it's big mountains we saw Tons of deer and several herds of elk. elk yeah. It was it was pretty impressive. Turkeys, area. yeah, really fun. So that's where <laughs> we're headed today. But um, I wanted to go back to the mail thing real quick. I, I don't think I did a very good job of explaining the mail service that we use. I think it's called Mail Link, and it's just a business. And your address is the business address, and then they have separate box numbers. So. You could forward, you can change your address and have it all sent to them, and then they go through it for you. If you want them to get rid of your spam, junk mail, they'll toss it for you. If something they they notify you via email every time you get a letter. It's pretty amazing. It's, yeah, the service they provide is for ten dollars a month. Ten dollars a month, and then for additional fees they can do things like open your mail scan the first page it's a certain fee it's not very expensive we've never done it but it's pretty cheap scan the pages and email them to you so you can see what it is if it's important um, and then if you need something forwarded to you on the road it's two dollars their one, fee whether yeah. it's one piece of mail or 20 pieces. plus the shipping charge so um, really nominal fee for the service they provide. We we really just don't have a lot of mail that goes there because nowadays you can do most everything paperless. So there's not a huge need, but you still have to have an address. You know, we still do get some things going there. So extremely useful. Actually, it's for the price of a post office box when we had a P.O. box. So it's it's a great service and that's one of the ways we get mail on the road. And as you see, we had it forwarded to the post office and that worked smoothly. I, we would do that again for sure. So, all right, we'll catch you next time. Thank you so much. Leave a comment. Bye.